I just messaged you. <laughs> oh, hi. <laughs> hey, how are you doing? I'm good. I was waiting for the time. I was ready actually, but I was yeah. just making sure everything is okay. Um, let me just click on it so that I go live. I don't. Uh, two days ago, I tried to connect to Facebook, and I did. I succeeded. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For some reasons, it just stopped after five minutes. So the video was was totally complete. Um, yesterday, I did not have the option to go live. I checked everything was okay, and today is okay. <laughs> so, okay, let's give it a shot. Yeah, I'm gonna connect now. So. Uh, let me see we have some guests for now and we can get started without killing any time yeah. um, so i should officially welcome you uh, thank you zishan for your time and everything and so much of what what people can see is because of are because of you and your efforts thank you so much and thank you mm -hmm. for helping um, to make this a, a great success um, okay, Zishan, tell us about yourself, what you do, what your specialization um, is, uh, so that people have a better idea of uh, you and your business. And then yeah, for sure. So just before I jump into it, I uh, wanted to ask, are we live right now? Uh, because I have a few people who are coming on Facebook, so I just want to make sure they catch up. Okay, so give me a second. I just clicked. Hey, Go Gail. Live. Thanks for joining. I can see some names that I know, but uh, if you guys want to switch on your videos, that's fine too. Uh, it, it makes more of an interactive, so I can see faces and I know I'm talking to human beings. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, I am live on Facebook now. There should, I think there is some delay, but okay. it should be okay. We can, okay. we can start. Yeah. Okay. okay. Awesome. So uh, first of all, thank you, Ali, for um, this brilliant idea that you came up with. And uh, I really feel proud to be part of this thing. And it gave me an opportunity to you know, use some of my technical skills and get this thing uh, to a level where we have. And um, I can see you have a lot of influence. I mean, you have a lot of people who are following you or you're really famous. So I think it really helped to take that message to the next level. Um, so thanks for, you know, Thanks for doing all of this that you are doing. And I mean, you're welcome. I mean, it's always a team effort, right? So there, there's Absolutely. always, uh, everybody has to contribute. And so as far as I'm concerned, um, I would not waste too much of time on, uh, you know, this is not a webinar. So I'll just give a two minute introduction. As a profession, um, I'm an accountant. I work in the accounting industry for 15 years. Um, I was reporting to the top. I was actually part of top management in all of my professional career. And five years ago, I was um, diagnosed with hyperthyroid. And I was told by my doctors that the only solution was surgery and then go to uh, be medicine uh, for the rest of my life. That's not what something I wanted for my life. So I asked for guidance. And I said, there has to be another way. And I started looking for options. And by the grace of God, you know, I was guided to a very specific type of meditation which helped me heal completely without any surgery or medicine. I've been free from, I don't take any medicines. It never came back. So it was really an emotional thing. It was emotional healing. Um, Ali Reza also specializes in emotional stuff. So he understands it. And that's where my journey started. And slowly and gradually, the guy who was qualified as an accountant and was you know, in the corporate world started to shift from there um, slowly. Um, it was all organic. So I say the first 40 years of my life were planned by me and the next 40 years are planned by God. So I'm just, I'm just <laughs> following the paths um, in any way. So, um, so I started helping people I became certified as an emotion code practitioner. Then I became sort of partner with subconscious release technique. I've written books. I do public speaking. I do coaching and this is my full time. I quit my job. Um, this is what I do full time. And um, all, a lot of this has come it was a trigger. My heart was a trigger. As we go into the book that we are going to discuss today, is this was one of the books that was uh, almost like the foundation of where I found my way. Uh, and the book is the, if you don't know what book we are talking about, is The Attractor Factor by Joe Vitale. Amazing book. It has a very systematic step by step process. Joe Vitale himself was living in a car for 15 years, was bankrupt, was, had no money. 
would it would be difficult for him to come up with two hundred dollars of rent every month? And now he's a multi-millionaire and he's world famous author, speaker. So you can just imagine the transformation, the principles that are discussed in this book brought for him and they brought for me. Um, so yeah, so all of this happened. And so what are we? What is this book about? I would you know just jump into it and I will share sure. my personal experiences. It, it's always relatable, you know, reading a book is one thing, but when you can relate to somebody's examples, it makes even more sense. And we are, it's easy for us to remember. So before I jump, the first question I want to ask everybody who's listening to me right now is how do you define reality? If I ask you, what is reality? What comes to your mind? Anything that comes like, there's no judgment here. We just want to see what are the thoughts? What comes to your mind when I say, what is reality? Just type anything that comes in the chat box, please. That's a good question. So guys, what do you think? What is reality? Um, is it being? Is it uh, breathing? I don't know. Is it breathing? That's, that's what you say? Being. being. Oh, being. And, yep. and breathing too, words. Uh, in my view, I just- All right, being. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Solma says, what we feel is our reality. Yeah, yeah. what we feel right. is our reality. Okay, mm -hmm. awesome. So what we, what we have understood look, or what my understanding was up till the point when I started having these experiences was the, my destiny has been pre-written. There's a, there's a certain path I can take. There's a cause and effect. So I take certain actions and then, um, the results show up. However, what I realized after going through this personal experience and what the author discusses in the book is our reality, the present situation, the challenges that we are facing in different parts of our life, at the same time, the things that are working out really well for us are the result of the belief systems, the things that we believe to be true in our mind. And there are two types of beliefs. One is a positive belief that serves me and then there is a negative belief, which doesn't serve me, but I still hold true. So as an example, if somebody had a childhood where they were, um, let's say the parents were always fighting all the time and there was abuse in their relationship. When that child grows up, that child has seen difficulty in relationships and marriages. And so at some point, the child would, has developed, would have developed two types of beliefs. One would be about himself or herself, that I caused my parents to fight. That's the, the most, most common thing that I see with my clients, that I caused my parents to fight. They blame themselves. And the second thing they believe, this is again common, is that relationships are difficult. It's hard to stay in relationships. And so they grow older, and now they, are, they have grown up with this type of mindset. And they would start manifesting almost like creating that in their own relationships. And I've seen children who have gone through difficult childhood, especially when their parents used to fight, they grow up and they go from one relationship to another relationship to another relationship, or they try to stay in a relationship, even if it's abusive because of the fear that they'll break out of it. And so this is just an example. So when we say reality, if you have, a situation that you're facing in your life right now, first thing I would do is look at your childhood and see, are you repeating a pattern that your parents were following? That would give you a clue that you are following your life based on a belief system. So what is reality is I, I have my own definition of reality. Okay. My definition of reality is my reality is just factual information, which tells me where I am right now. And that's all this is. And at the same time, I have the option to create whatever I want, depending on where I change my belief systems. So if I am sitting here right now, and let's say I have difficulty in my relationship, I say, okay, no attachment to the information, just taking it as factual information. Okay, I have a problem with my relationship. Now, what do I do with it? I, I take a solution oriented approach and I look at it, okay, so here are certain things I can do. I can do counseling. I can learn about relationship. I can order some of the books that are on relationship. I can talk to my partner and see how I can serve. What are their concerns and complaints? You know, taking a solution oriented approach and saying, okay, so the factual information is I have a problem with my relationship. 
what can I do to resolve it? But unfortunately, a lot of people have this mindset of running. So they say, I can't live with this partner anymore. I have to run out of it. Or this, uh, this relationship has come to a point where we can't resolve any issues anymore. And all those things come to our mind that which are like fight and flight kind of thing. You know, you want to run away from it because you don't want to solve the issue because you feel that you have no control over the situation. So reality is where we are right now. And it can be financial, it can be health, it can be anything. Now, in some cases, the solution is probably not fixing the relationship, but probably finding a way of getting out of the relationship because you have to be realistic. You don't want to be in an abusive relationship. So I was just giving an example, right? So the question comes back to you are in a reality. This reality is created by what you have believed to be true until today. And look at uh, those areas of your life that are working really well and think, what are my beliefs about that area? And you will see positive beliefs, good things. So there's a really good book, um, especially people who struggle with financial challenges. So the book, if you haven't read it already, is called Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And it's a classic example of how your belief system and how you know, up, your upbringing really affect your financial results. And people say rich people get rich and poor get poor. There's a reason for it. Because when you are raised in a wealthy family, the mindset of looking at things is very different because they do not focus on tiny, small things. They focus on bigger things and manifesting things. And they believe that when they take steps, things happen for them and they believe themselves to be lucky. While at the same time, when you're raised in a poor environment, and this is not your fault, but you have to look at it, you're raised in an environment where there is fight about money, where there is focus on saving too much, where there is fight on spending money, all of, all of that stuff. So your money believes is that there's lack and limitation. And so you've grown up in that environment. What do you expect to happen in your life? Lack and limitation. And I know it's, it might be a new concept for some of you, but this is how reality is created for us. So this is exactly what Joe Vitale covers in his book, The Attractor Factor. So first of all, this is the step one, you know, you're creating the foundation at least. So they say, accepting that there is a problem is 50% of the solution. So once you look at your reality and say, yes, there is something wrong with me. Not saying this is what I have been handed down. This is what I was destined to live. No, you are a powerful human being and you have the power to change your life. So first of all, accept that there is a problem and accept that you have the power to change it. So that's step one reality created by my mind or my upbringing that's where i am now the second one is think of something that you truly deserve something that you really want right now think of it you don't have to type it just think of it in your mind and if you're making notes you can write it i can see some people are making notes so you can write it and now if you want just for 30 seconds, close your eyes and imagine that you already have it. So you identified something that you really wanted. And now just close your eyes and imagine that you already have it. Okay. You already have it. Whatever was your desire, you already have it. And enjoy that feeling of having it right now. And now tell me, and you can type it in the chat box, what was that emotion? How was it? How did it feel? How did it feel having that you wanted right now? What was that emotion that showed up? If more than one emotion, just type in the chat box so I know. The feeling of having what you want, you already have it. <laughs> I love that. Yes. So, Mm hmm. Great answers. So, so if I, if I go a little more deeper at the end of the day, we want something because we want to be happy. That is the crux of it. Like feeling relaxed, feeling joy, feeling content makes you what it makes you feel happy. So at the core of, yeah, in control of happiness. <laughs> I love that. 
So at the core of everything that we want, right? It doesn't matter what it is. It's money, relationship, finances, health, whatever it is. At the core of it, we think once I have that thing, then I'll be happy, right? So Joe Vitale discusses um, in his book that there is a faster way of getting what you want. And the faster way is just decide to be happy now. No matter what is your external circumstance, no matter what's happening outside right now, just for a moment, just decide because you do have a choice. Just decide that all of that is true. I'm not denying it. I'm not being, you know, somebody who ignores reality, but I just want to be happy now. If you were, yeah. <laughs> Next. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, you know, that's like monkey mind, always wanting more. So happiness should be unconditional. Exactly. You hit the nail. Exactly. There is unconditional. But we as human beings have learned this. And there is nothing wrong. And I want to make it very clear. I'm not saying, and even, uh, and I, as I said, I'm reading from the book, The Attractor Factor. He also doesn't say that you should not have desires. Having desires is what keeps life, life going because the challenge of trying to get to that level where I would finally have the, what I wanted is what keeps life very interesting. You know, it's a journey. So it's always the focus on, so I'm happy right now. I have 15 things that I want in my life, but I'm happy right now. That's the mindset. So yeah, you need to have that attitude of, I want the next thing and the next thing, that's fine. This is not being materialistic. And it's not materialistic when you are not attached to being happy once you have it. So you, so it's like, just understand it. Okay. It might be a little complicated to understand. So make, let me repeat it. So there are two things. One is I have a list of 15 things that I want. They might manifest between now to, I don't know when, but at the same time, whether I reach, whether I get those things or not, I'm happy now. And then the attachment is removed and honest to God. So the, the secret to manifestation, the secret of getting anything, the fastest way is when you're not attached to the outcome. The minute you get attached to it, I want it right now. I want it so badly. That's when you start pushing it away because you give it wrong energy, right? So it's like, I'm content with where I am right now. I'm happy with where I am right now. However, I do have some desires and these are my desires, but my happiness is not dependent on these desires. I'm happy right now. So thanks for sharing. Um, yeah, happiness should not be unconditional. Now, the, the next thing that comes now, this is, this is a <clears throat> funny one where we talk to people and we say, so you have a belief system, that belief system is creating your reality. Now you accept that fact and you say, okay, so this is my reality. There is one more thing that you need to do. You have to understand now that you know that you have a belief system, it is being created by certain programs. So our mind, look at our mind and imagine this is a computer program. And you know, you all have computers or whatever devices you're using. And what happens when you have a virus on your computer? You go and install an antivirus and you remove the antivirus and the computer starts performing at the way it was performing before. Similarly, our mind is receiving programs consistently, regularly on a daily basis from TV, from music, from the news that we watch, from the books that we read, we are continuously getting programs. So you have to take responsibility. And this is where the biggest challenge comes for people. People accept that, yeah, I have programs which I brought up. This is because of my parents that I'm poor or whatever, right? But they don't take the responsibility of reprogramming their mind right now, today. So people who are on this call right now are not watching Netflix. They are ready to program their mind to the right thing. And that is the attitude that everybody needs. If you want to be successful, you have to take ownership of what you put in your mind. People are so, you know, there is such a craze about what you eat and how organic it has to be and all that stuff. But more important than that, in my opinion, more important than that is what movies you watch, what TV programs you watch, what are you reading? Who are you hanging out with? Because consistently you're getting that program those people who are saying, oh man, this is so difficult. Life is so tough. It doesn't work out. You know, you're continuously, you watch TV dramas or whatever, you know, people are crying, depression, anxiety, that people are killing each other. News is the same thing. Continuously, you know, you're getting bombarded with this negative stuff 
and then your life is miserable and then you say i don't know why well because you're allowing yourself to be programmed literally if you go on any any guide of your remote what do they say tv programs they're called programs for a reason if you go to you know read school you know school schedule it says school program for the month it's called program for a reason pay attention the word program is being used so openly they're saying to you that we are programming you <laughs> right and and i just find it very interesting that people still find it difficult to believe when i share this idea it's true they're using the word program so just be aware if you haven't done it so far be aware take a note of what things you are surrounding yourself what tvs what all kind of media look at every single thing and if you can start changing it so i'll give you a suggestion and then i'll move on on my facebook what i did is you know i would see these people posting rants negative stuff all kinds of stuff and i use i use for facebook for my business but at the same time i use it for personal use so what i did is i unfollowed every single page and person who was posting that kind of stuff i started following people like for example ali raza people who are doing things who are posting positive stuff who are uplifting me so every time i go to facebook the only thing that i see is positive stuff which is uplifting me so people say you know so i am doing on um, detox for social media and i ask why because there is so much this going there well, just unfollow everything and just follow the things that lift you up similarly you know we are in a group where we have this business owners we are all talking about positive people positive things we are doing something so anyways i just wanted to emphasize programming yourself intentionally for success is one of the most important thing that only successful people do and you can start from today okay um now we go to the next which is the step number 2 and i won't be able to cover all the steps in detail because the book is quite extensive so i'm just going to give summary and some of my understanding from it so the step number 2 is intention you know what happens uh, most of us wake up in the morning and then we just go with the flow this is a very common term go with the flow right so what happens happens if somebody yells at you or um, if you're working the boss is upset with you or you have a you know a spouse who is upset with you most of people working from home these days and um, if you have children you know you have these issues financial issues and we just say hey we are just dealing with the situation right that's again a very passive approach to life that is like and it's it's called for example it's said in a very pride manner hey i'm dealing with life situations there's nothing wrong with it but there is a next level to it and that is if you start your day with the intention like you know the mentor we follow colin strick he says the same thing when you start your day set some intentions for the day rather than going with the flow you know what's going to happen today if you are working as an employee you have a certain boss that you're reporting to so set an intention that today's day is going to be awesome so i'll give you an example of how i do my intentions okay so i have one of my my younger child she is very active and she gets very frustrated when she is home because of the school system and all that and generally she is very hyper right so sometimes we have difficulty managing her so what i do is and i've done it many times i would start the day in the morning i spend like half an hour for setting intentions for the day and gratitude and all so i set an intention that today myra is going to be awesome she's going to be calm and peaceful she'll be working on her projects she'll be funny and and i am telling you every single day any day when i have set that intention she picks up on that intention at subconscious level and things go so smoothly and i used to do this when i was working in a corporate world i used to have about seven people report to me and some days i would just for the sake of fun and i'm not kidding i would just in, intend that today when i go in my office some day sometime during the day everybody would be laughing and then i've noticed every single time i would set this intention i would go to my you know i had a cabin and my team used to sit outside of uh, my cabin they had cubicles and then around lunch time or sometime i would notice everybody is laughing they are having fun they and it's like oh my god <laughs> you know and so can you imagine not this is not about going with the flow this is about setting the intention for the day because knowing that you have the power to influence things yes challenges would happen i'm not saying challenges are not going to happen but now they will be 50% reduced because now you are taking control taking charge of your life so that's setting intention um so i i'll just read a quick uh, three lines that joe vitali has written on the same uh, in in the book he says 
You can float with circumstances life brings you, or you can create your own direction and your own circumstances. It begins with a decision. So that it's like 100% true for me. I practiced it and I preach it. The next thing that is, um, this is specifically about money. And if you have, you know, if some of us are business owners here on the call, and even if not, there is this idea that if you are financially successful, you cannot be a spiritual person. And if you are a spiritual person, like a healer or uh, along those lines, you cannot have a lot of money. And I have personally um, encountered this idea with a lot of healers because I'm a personally a healer. So I come across healers a lot. And I see many of them, unfortunately, are struggling financially. And this is because we have accepted this idea that money and spirituality cannot go hand in hand together. And Joe Vitale is one of the best people to talk about it because he's very spiritual and he's very successful financially. And we picked up this idea from various places, from you know, what, how we saw religious people. And we saw like even, you know, I belong to some religious centers and I know people who are leaders in those religious centers are not doing very well financially. But here's one question I want to ask, and I'm not debating whether this idea is right or not, because I believe it to be true. You can be financially successful and you can be spiritual. Here's one question I ask, who are the major donors and contributors of these religious centers or spiritual centers? All the wealthy people, right? So if it was true that money and spirituality cannot go together, there will be no religious center existing right now because then wealthy people will not be there, right? So it's just a belief that we have accepted as you were growing up. It is true that there are certain really rich people who become very mean, but it's not true across the board. But we have accepted this idea that is true across the board and we don't want to be those mean people. That's why we don't want to be rich. And this is a big belief that we have grown up with, especially, you know, and I don't know if it's true in the West, but in all the other parts that, you know, um, Middle East, Asia, we have seen these religious people wearing these long white clothes or black clothes, whatever, and they're not rich. And so we don't think that we can be rich because we want to be good people. We want to be religious people. We want to be spiritual people. So we don't want to be rich. So subconsciously this program is running. I don't want to be rich because if I want, if I become rich, then I will be not a nice person. So if you have not challenged this idea so far, I want you to think about this idea today. Do you believe in this? Are you comfortable with the idea of being spiritual at the same time being wealthy? Are you okay with that? And check inside. You will know, right? We all know inside of us. Okay. And the uh, next thing is believing in something. Okay. So now most of the, I don't know about, you know, this is not a religious discussion. So, but generally the world we live in, when the minute we say we believe in God or we believe in angels or we believe in spiritual beings, we are going in, in a situation where we are looked upon as if we are talking about something, what, you know, and, and it's almost like something you, you don't want to talk about. But at the same time, here's the thing. When we believe in something, it doesn't have to be God. You can call it super universe, superpower, whatever you want to call it. Subconsciously, we create this idea that we are not alone. We are being supported. And it is true because so, so the healing world, the, where I come from, I know this to be true, but if you ask me for a proof, I won't be able to provide it. But at the same time, let, let's just look at the logical concept. If somebody believes that there is God and angels and spirit guides and they are supporting me on my journey, then that person would feel more supported when we have challenges in our life. A lot of people, you know, they say, but I'm alone, right? Because we can't see those. So that's where it comes to consciously, if you just accept this idea, just for the sake of allowing you to be more successful in your challenges, that you're not alone, you're supported in your journey. Every second of the day, there are, there are angels and guides and you know, God is helping you, supporting you. Is that a better idea? Or the fact that because I can't see any of that, I don't believe in any of that, and I am alone on my journey. It's just from the mental point of view, you know, like when leaders are there, 
whether it's a country's president or any in any situation, they always have advisors with them for a reason because they are they need them and they get those guidance and they are able to make the right decisions and they have mastermind almost like a kind of thing coming to help them. So it's an ex extremely important point just to accept at conscious level that I'm not alone, I'm supported and you can call the, those beings any name you want, but it helps you and guide you. And then you can sometimes almost like tune in and I do this at the, so this is a very quick short exercise. If you have a challenge and you can't figure out what to do before going to sleep, ask yourself. Sometimes people will tell me, this is something that I'm dealing with. Can you give me a solution for it? So it's very interesting when Ali was out, you know, when he told me that we wanted to do this, um, this launch. And the first title we came up with was book readers or book marathon, something like that. And we sent out the email and we got like really low signups. And I told him, I said, listen, this is not working. We are not getting the attention because people are getting into different. So he told me, he gave me some suggestions. I, I couldn't come up with any suggestions. So this is what I did. Honest to God, before going to sleep in the night, I said to my subconscious mind, give me a title that will work for people because this is communicating the wrong message. And I wake up in the morning and I never check my phone in the morning. I wake up in the morning and just check in. Come in and that we had the title. Uh, book nugget summit. We came up with the title. I changed it within an hour. I posted it everywhere changed and we have so many people here, right? So it, it's a fact. I mean, so whatever I'm talking about, it's not just fiction. It's not something theory that I have read in the book. It's, I have something, th this is something I practice every day and I've been practicing it for more than five years now and it has changed my life completely. So ask your subconscious mind. It's there for you to help. You're not alone. You have all kinds of support that you need. Just ask, how can I solve this problem? And you will sometimes just get no answer, right? And that's okay. Maybe you're not ready to receive the answer. Ask again the next day. Sometimes you will get something else. Hey, speak to this person. I've had so many things happen to me when, since I've been practicing this. I mean, I can go into details, but that's not the point of this uh, call. Um, okay, so we are going to end on this one. I don't... If you have, so we did this exercise that you want something and you know, you felt that you already have it. Now we're going to back. So think about the same thing, a desire that you want, you don't have it right now. And ask this question to yourself. Why don't you have it? Why don't you have it? And you don't have to answer this question. Just, just listen in. Why don't you have it? And whatever answer comes, if it is anything else, then it, I know it's on the way to me. That means you have certain belief system, which is preventing you from having it because there is nothing that you cannot have, but it's all those beliefs. And this exercise is important because it helps you identify those beliefs. So why don't you have it? You don't have it because of whatever it is. Your mind's told you a story told you, and that is a story for sure, right? We know that. And if you didn't get beliefs show up, ask a follow-up question, which is, what does it mean you don't yet have it? What does it mean you don't have it? You know, like it's, it's a question like, how can you not have it? You want something, why don't you have it? <laughs> kind of thing, right? So it's again, more beliefs will show up. Like I don't have money, I don't have time, I don't have the resources, I'm not that famous, uh, I don't have the expertise, I wasn't born in a rich family, all those things that come up, everything, and I always say anything that your mind tells you, which has a word because in it, it's a story. It's nothing but a story. And sometimes those stories are very powerful. And sometimes those stories are not that powerful. Sometimes we can just release it and have a, have a discussion with ourselves. Hey, Zishan, what do you mean you don't have it? You have all the resources that you need. You just need to take action. Sometimes it's that easy and you take action. Sometimes you have to contact somebody to get rid of those subconscious beliefs. Um, that, but it is possible. It is doable. And anybody and anybody can do it. Um, okay. And there is one. Uh, so Ari, do we have one more uh, time for one more exercise? Um, it's 12.34. We still have time. Sure. Okay. I mean, I don't want to mm, bore people for <laughs> no reason. No, we are enjoying, I'm enjoying it very much. Okay. You're doing great, bro. It's amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Keep going. Okay.
I'm just looking for the thing that I wanted to share. Sure. Okay, so this is, um, so this guy, um, the author, Joe Vitale, he used to go to a healer whose name was Jonathan. And so he shares the three steps this healer used to take whenever Joe would go to him to get clear of whatever the problem is, right? And so you don't have to go to a healer if you want, you can, but this is the, I wanted to share those three steps. So whenever he would go to this healer, and so you can even sit in front of the mirror and become your own healer, right? And and this is the question, the first thing you have to ask, what do you want? Because a lot of people complain a lot. They say, I don't like this, I don't like my wife, I don't like my husband, I don't like my children, I don't like my financial situation, I don't like lack of money, all of that stuff they keep talking about, right? But whenever you say something I don't like, you have to flip it and say, okay, so what do you want? Stop complaining, what do you want? So the first step in this process of if you want to get clarity and manifest whatever you want, what do you want? And just write it down, regardless of where your situation is, regardless of whatever restrictions your mind says you have, just say, what do you want? Okay. And the second question that you ask yourself, it's what's in the way of your success. And then again, this again will help you bring those stories up. What's in the way of your success. And I have heard so many stories, like people say, my wife doesn't allow me to do this work. I'm doing part-time hiding from my wife because she doesn't want me to do this. You know, I would be a millionaire if you were giving, given the permission. Sometimes we are just seeking permission where the person doesn't even know anything. <laughs> And anyway, so the first one is, what do you want? Second is, what's in the way of your success? And the third one is, how can you receive energy to help you achieve success? And you just, when you wrote down what's in the way of your success, how can you receive energy? Almost imagine that there is this divine energy which is coming and whatever you wrote down, which is in your way of success, Imagine that divine energy is just clearing all of that. You, you don't need, you need to do anything almost to the fact because when your subconscious accepts the fact that there is divine support there with you and you're writing these down and you say, okay, so this is in my way, why I'm not getting what I want. And I mean, this divine energy is coming and it's liquidating all of that. So it's like almost like blowing it out of your life and now it's gone. And then you see what happens because once you are clear what you want, you've identified the programs that are preventing you from getting it, and now you release them. Then there should be no reason except that you don't take action. And I will just end my th um, discussion on this. Is one thing that I have seen, unfortunately, in the world of law of attraction and manifestation is this. There are groups and groups where people go and say, I affirm that I will receive a million dollars, and there will be 500 comments under it. Yes, 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 you know but they, those people are just sitting in front of the laptop and doing nothing. Just typing yes is not enough. Then you have to look for opportunities. Then you have to take action when those opportunities show up for you. And people do not do that. And that is the reason why 90% of people do not get results from the law of protection or the secret is because they just want things to show up without doing anything. It's, this is not about hard work. This is about inspired action. This is when you feel like Ali Raza called and said, hey, Zishan, you want to be part of this uh, virtual summit? And Zishan saying, yes, I'm jumping on it, right? This is what this is about. Not sitting on your laptop and not doing anything and saying no to all the opportunities. So that's it from me. Um, if you guys have any questions, anything that I can help you with, please feel free to type in the chat box. Awesome. Great. Yes, if there is any question, you can just type it here and um, or you can just uh, unmute yourself and and share it with us. That would be great. Amazing. So you mentioned a couple of key points. So while they're thinking of uh, the question, I just want to ask you once to once again, summarize the key points, the, the couple of points that you mentioned and you elabor elaborated on. If you can tell us one more time in, in a very summarized way, in probably in a minute or so, uh, that would be great. Okay. Yeah. So first of all, accept your reality as factual information, mm -hmm. not something that defines you, but mm -hmm. something that tells you where, what is your starting point. Secondly, 
now you have the power to change so accepting that i have the power to change there are some mm-hmm. things that i need to do right thirdly would be what do you allow yourself to be programmed with the media mm-hmm. the books the you know surroundings and all those things and and i think the the fourth and the most important one is taking action and any opportunity that shows up for you and sometimes you say yes to too many things but in my opinion my personal experience is i would rather say yes to everything that shows up for my life and one of them work out than say no to everything and nothing happens and i'm still stuck right so and you any time you say yes to something it leads to something else a lot of people don't take action because they say no my goal is that and i don't see how this will lead me to that and that's why a lot of people don't get results because they want the whole pathway to be clear to them before they go anywhere but a lot most of the times is just looking at what shows up for me right now yes this is my intention i don't see how it connects but i'm going to take this step anyways because i feel this will go somewhere and then just going in faith and the most important thing i think i forgot to mention is that you are not alone you are supported at every step of the way you have guidance and support mechanisms in place within you in your subconscious mind and outside of you and there is no doubt about it you that you will be successful sure. beautiful thank you so much great so do we have any question here let me check my facebook if there is any question um no question there yet this this is very very beautiful i i really love this topic because um so in my classes i talk about the subconscious mind so i i i don't talk much about energy and and what happens but all the mechanisms of the subconscious are in line with us to help us really get uh, get what we want but there are rules as you mentioned like we have to understand our beliefs we have to have positive beliefs and um and i like the the example you mentioned in lots of uh, instagram pages they say uh, you will be a millionaire type yes if you if you agree and then everyone says yes but but it doesn't make any change because there is no feeling first of all people don't feel it if they don't feel it it's not going to happen and second of all there is no action as a, as a consequence so we have to create this and generate this feeling so that we can move forward by action by positive action this was amazing we have one question can you see the question from yeah. merdan mm-hmm. yeah before that there was a question about conflict what is your suggestion for dealing with conflicts uh, merdan can you uh, elaborate a little bit on that what do you mean a little explanation and what do you does not align with what do you you don't know what else to do so sometimes in life if you feel like that you are doing something and we were having a call with a client yesterday and she is in a situation where she is doing something which she doesn't like um So, but that's the only source of income for her and my suggestion to her was if you can physically continue doing that continue because it will keep bringing some cash but at the same time set an intention for what you actually want so it's not like because sometimes what happens if we completely remove everything that we don't and that is the only source of income this was more like financial situation then you become even more desperate for the other thing to show up and that's where you're literally pushing it away right so the fact that some income was coming in for her i don't know if this example explains but find what will work for you in your heart set an intention for that while continue to work with what you have right now because we never have ideal situation ever life is not about ideal situation a lot of people keep waiting for the ideal situation and never shows up so working with what you have even if it feels like a little in conflict with what you want setting the intention for what you want and it will definitely show up for you um and i have a client of mine who was in a job situation where he didn't like the environment didn't like the uh, job pay was low and all of that and while he was working he told me this and i said okay what do you want so he i uh, he said oh i want a job like this and it this you know this pay and this kind of environment and this and this and this and he wrote it down and i'm not kidding ali raza within 3 months or oh, sorry within 3 weeks he has that job now he is working at that job and when he got it he called me and he was freaking out he said what just happened he said if he was because when he got the offer letter like he compared with his list of things that he wanted and he's sticking and he's sticking and i said 
and that's when he called me. He says, Zishan, out of 10 things, it has nine things that I wanted in my job. And I said, okay, so focus on those nine things. Don't focus on the one thing that it doesn't have. Right. Mm -hmm. But so it, it actually happened. So he was in a place where he didn't like it. But at the same time, he set an intention of what he wanted. And then it showed up for him in his experience because he was not attached to it. And that's the key. You don't have to be attached to it. Exactly. So I hope I answered the question. So the intention is, yeah, exactly. No, first is what do you want? And then you set it as an intention. So you get clear on what you want. Then you write it down as an intention. And if an opportunity shows up, you keep your you know, radar open because something will show up and you will have to take some sort of action. Sometimes it's as simple as writing an email. Sometimes it's going and meeting somebody. Could be anything. It will require for you to, uh, how do you set your intention? It's basically the way I do it is I write it down. I write down the entire scene. So if it's a job, for example, I write down, this is where I'm working. You know, this is what we did with the client. This is where I'm working. This is the pay. This is the environment. If it's a relationship, like in the case of my daughter, I would say, I always write it down. Because, don't type it. I highly recommend writing because when you're writing, you have 68,000 of your neurons, work, neurons working. And when you're typing, you have only four working. So there's a huge, huge difference and benefit in writing things rather than just typing it. I used to be a big, big supporter of typing everything. When I learned this, I quit everything. I just write, write, write. So write your intention. What do you want exactly how you want it? Don't put a date. Always remember, do not put a date because if you put a deadline and it doesn't show up on that time, you'll be depressed and you will give up. So instead of doing that, say, I want this. This is what I want. And it can show up tomorrow because now there's a deadline, right? It can show up tomorrow. <laughs> You don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. I, I love this. Uh, just one point here, um, as uh, you, you talk about like setting the intention and everything. Some people might say, well, I, I want to set the intention. I, I, I want to talk about what I want, but it's not possible. The, the thing is, uh, they think it's not possible. And since this becomes a belief for them, it never happens because they never take action to get the, what, what they really want. So it is important when you set the intention, you have to forget about the probability and focus on the possibility. This is mm -hmm. very, very important because people say, okay, the likelihood of me getting what I think I get, uh, I can get is very low. So if you think that way, it's not gonna happen. You have to focus on the possibility and then remove your limiting beliefs because if we believe it's not gonna happen, we are not going to, act in certain ways consistently over time to get the result at the end. This is very, very important. Um, so, uh, okay, one thing I learned yeah, so was to write on, on plain there's, paper. There's one mm -hmm. uh, there's one question. Can you hear me clearly? No, it's okay. Okay, so there's one question about uh, not being attached. Now this is, mm -hmm. so this is the uh, chapter five, not the chapter five, but the step five. And when you don't get attached to the outcome, it is a challenging mm -hmm. one. I wouldn't say it's not. And that's why I say when you feel happy now, that's the key of not getting attached to it. So it's one of those things. I want something in my life. I would really like for it to show up, but I am happy the way I am right now. That's when you are not attached to the outcome. No deadline. I, I would highly, highly encourage never set a deadline. Um, so yeah, so not getting attached is only, so when you are, whatever it is you're working with, and that's why I said, if you, if it's a job that you are asking about, don't quit your current job because then again, you will become very desperate. Similarly, what we're doing, being happy right now helps you not get attached with the outcome. So, and this is what he already said, Forget the probability, focus on the possibility. There's one thing that you can do to increase your confidence that you will have what you want in life. And it's this, look at your history. In your life, there was a time when you had a challenging situation, you didn't know how you will come out of it. And then something happened and we all have those and something happened and that problem went away just like that. And you said, wow, man, thank God that is gone now. Mm -hmm. If you can remember those things and remind yourself 
more often, then you will have the confidence then even the problem that you're dealing with right now, it will go away because it has happened to you in the past. It's not somebody's story. It's not something Zishan shared or Ali shared. It's your own story. So that will give you the confidence. Yes, in the past it has happened and it will happen again. And I focus on the possibility. I love that. Forget the probability, focus on the possibility. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Merkad mentioned something, uh, a very, very nice question. Um, so he said in NLP, we say when you set a goal, uh, put a date on it so that you know by when you want to achieve it. Um, what's your answer to this? After that, I, I put my input there. So NLP is not um, my <laughs> expertise, but the thing that I shared with you is right now has been shared by a guy who's extremely successful. And he, when he shared this thing, I used to have deadlines for my goals until that point. And I wasn't getting anywhere, to be very honest. I was getting very small amount of success. What he said is that, which rings true to me is because if I set a deadline, then I'm kind of almost allowing my ego because ego wants control, right? Ego wants control. So ego wants my, I want this, I want it by this date. So I'm in control. But when you allow it to show up in due time and you remove the deadline factor, then it's not your ego. It's you're allowing the universe to make it show up anytime. And so the second thing he followed it with was, Every morning when you get up or every night that you go to sleep, be like the child who is waiting, who is night of 24th is a Christmas Eve. And he's that child who's going to get up tomorrow morning. And he knows that all the gifts are going to be hiding in the Christmas, under the Christmas tree. So the excitement, oh my God, it might just show up tomorrow. That is the habit that you develop. So you set goals, no deadlines. So I'm open to receiving from the universe anytime it shows up. And then every night I go to sleep, I say, wow, tomorrow probably is going to show up for me. I'm so excited for tomorrow. And in the morning you do the same thing. I'm so excited for today. I wonder what wonderful experiences are going to show up for me today, right? So you stay in that energy of excitement and because you raise your vibration, manifestation is all about being in a high energy vibration, right? Mm -hmm. so that's how I understood it. So I stopped putting deadlines and started working for me in a faster way than I would ever imagine. Amazing. Amazing. Uh, thank you so much. So let me just put this uh, also, for, uh, explain it from the NLP perspective. Mm -hmm. Well, it is important to set goals. Well, we, we put goals for ourselves and everything. The point is what Zishan is explaining is all about the kind of feeling that is right for us to get what we want. Um, the whole point of it is we have to be confident that we get that, that we get it. So when you don't put a deadline for it, okay, in what in Zishan's word or in what Joe Vitali says, is is to say that you are confident that you're going to receive it. You don't know how, you don't know when, but you are so confident that it's going to happen. So you're going to take action to get it, right? In yeah. NLP, what we say is say something specific that you want, visualize it. And again, for us, there are processes so that we get into that kind of feeling and emotion that we are confident that we're gonna get it. And one example is this, I am here. So how many of you believe that I am talking to you right now as you're listening? So maybe all of you say yes, all of you. How many of you believe that I was here yesterday this time as I was interviewing Solmas, or the day before. Now, these are about the past, but how many of you are confident that tomorrow I'm gonna to be here this time talking to, uh, to Sina? So if you are that confident, it means you believe that it's gonna, it's gonna happen. So same thing as our goals, we have to believe. The most important thing is the belief. So subconsciously also, when you put a date on it and you're confident that you're gonna get it, then you won't be attached to it as Zishan says. So when you're not too attached to it, you are okay. If it happens, it's fine. If it doesn't happen, it's okay because you are moving forward and you can always revise your plan, revise your goal and get to there. Um, so that's, that's my explanation. Um, so there is no conflict between what both of us are saying, uh, please, uh, I, I hope it is, it I is think, uh, clear. If here. I can uh, just say one thing. I think when sure. you are doing NLP, you consider your mind as a tool, right? Yep. 
mm-hmm. and when you get to that level <laughs> it's a tool right so right. now you're using it to manipulate it to get the things that you want and there are just different approaches to doing it and there is no there is no right or wrong my 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 approach comes more from energetic point of view so i am like mm-hmm. more energy guy but i i know that mind is a tool and i can make it do whatever it wants whatever mm-hmm. i want and that's the level you reach then you start using nlp and almost like manipulate your mind to do what you want mm-hmm. yeah yeah that's right okay awesome that's- Yeah. Uh, some people are asking for your email and contact, uh, contact. If you can type here or you can just tell us how we can find you in Facebook, what's your website, it will be great, or Instagram, um, so that we can, we can find you. I'm going to cool. type in my Instagram as well. I'm quite <laughs> active there. My Facebook is very close to 5,000 people, so, uh-huh. but uh, well, here you, you can... You can find and follow me as well. You turn my life, your life, sorry, your life, yeah. right? Okay, that's awesome. I love the, the way you put it. I mean, I like the name, you turn your life. Sometimes we have to U-turn. Sometimes we have to just find a new direction and just- We literally have uh, yeah. And my wife came up with this name. <laughs> Beautiful. It's very creative, amazing. Awesome. We have a few more minutes, I think four more minutes and the Let me share the good news. This time I am still live on Facebook. Awesome. Uh, I tried many times, it was disconnected. I figured out the way, now it's okay. So hopefully from tomorrow we will have one, uh, the whole session. I've been going live and there are few views there. 20, it was, it was my energy. 30. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what I needed. <laughs> amazing, amazing. Um, we have, few minutes if there is any question if there is not um, you can tell us your your inside your final words from uh, from this uh, from this book your understanding uh, that would be great if you can share with us there's one question uh, and it's a very good question because you know sometimes when you are in this work you forget and you use those terms that a lot of people don't understand so I'll explain um, what do you what do I mean by vibration vibration really means This is the best way to understand your vibration. If you have had days when you get up in the morning and everything just goes in the flow, you go on the road and you know, this is the time when traffic, where everything was going. So you, the traffic is flowing for freely. You go to work, your boss is in a good mood, your work that get done, everything, you come back home, there's nice meal. So there are days when you're flowing, everything is working fine. That's when your vibration is high. That's what I mean. And when you have days which are miserable for you, when you have difficulty waking up and all that stuff and the day doesn't go really well, that's when your vibration is lower. Mm-hmm. And most of us depend on outside circumstances to keep our vibration high. But what we discussed today is how you can literally create your soul. If you, and there's a, there's a small scene in the movie, The Secret, where they show this lady wakes up and her toothpaste is over, then her slippers are broken and it goes and on and on, on, right? So this is when you wake up in the morning in the morning and let's say one thing doesn't go your way, you stop and you say, change your vibration. And you're going back in that vibration of higher vibration. I want this, I'm going to, I know this day is, this day is going to be so amazing. I'm going to enjoy this day. Literally, sometimes you have to force it, right? Not every time everything is going your way. But if you, this is how you raise your vibration. And I have a method, I have a program which I call MVM method where I teach, it's a 30 day program where I take people on a 30 day journey. I have one student from there online right now. So, and every 30 days is because, you know, like, like you know, 20, 21 days to create a habit and 30 days to make it 100% perfect. So that's what I mean by vibration. And you can keep your vibration higher. And the more you keep your vibration higher on a consistent basis, that's mm-hmm. how your results start to show up faster and faster and faster. And mm-hmm. personal experience with my clients, I've seen that I've learned from my teachers the same thing. So I hope yeah, that answered. Awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, Zishan, uh, as the last question, your next uh, book will be Science of Getting Rich. Is it your yeah. second book? I think, I think so. I'll have to double check on that. Okay. Okay. So uh, for our friends, as you know, we are going to meet every day at 12 o'clock from 12 to 1. Uh, every Thursday, we will meet Zishan. So we will, uh, I am very happy that we will see each other again next week this time and tomorrow 
we are going to be with Sina. Sina is also on this call. Um, I'm also very excited. He is a wonderful coach, business coach, and he is going to uh, talk about the book uh, Escape uh, from from Ankit Single. It's amazing. Please, please uh, do join us tomorrow as well. And again, on Monday, we will be with Fatima, and the chain goes on until um, the 5th of next month, June. That would be Great. Thank you so much, Zishan, once again. It was amazing. I really enjoyed it. I'm full of energy now. Uh, <laughs> I will be more productive in the evening. Uh, and thank you, everyone, for watching, for supporting us. And I hope we bring some uh, value for you. And we hope you're, you're really happy about it. Thank and you again. Uh, if I can just add one more thing. If you sure. know anybody who can benefit from these calls, these, all these people who are coming online are amazing and they have done a lot of things in their life and they, this is the best opportunity to, le to learn from someone because within one hour you get the entire thing that's in a book with their personal experiences. So make sure you share the link with everybody who you know and, and Ali just posted the right. links. So you share it on Facebook, social media, wherever you are with your friends. The mm -hmm. more people can benefit from this, the more impact we can have because energy always goes in compounding. So the more people we have, the compounding effect we can have on this universe overall. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, here's the link you can share with your friends, uh, whoever you think uh, likes books or can get benefit from here. And uh, definitely, it's also in my uh, Instagram bio. So if you forget this, it is there. You can share it all the time. And every day I will be sharing in stories the next, the coming book. Uh, so today I will be sharing the book that Sina is going to uh, talk about tomorrow. Thank you once again. And thank you, everybody. Thank I you. hope you enjoyed it. And we will meet again tomorrow at 12 o'clock Toronto time. Have thank a good you. day. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you. Goodbye.